Denver 7 News at 4. Classes were canceled, but not because of the weather. Why Douglas County teachers took the day off to take a stand against the district. People with disabilities are overwhelmingly unemployed. The model that's getting businesses to re-examine what it means to have employees with special needs. And while some farms are bringing in big profits, farmers aren't seeing those payoffs. The factor is making it hard to spend that money and get others into the business. And putting the masks down, or maybe not. As more counties let mask mandates expire, we hear from an expert on why people will keep their masks on for now. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jessica Porter. Well, classes were canceled today in Douglas County as hundreds of teachers rallied against a move by some school board members to try and fire the district superintendent. Denver 7's Russell Haythorn is in Castle Rock talking to teachers and others at the rally standing behind their efforts. Russell? Yeah, we're here in Castle Rock where thousands of teachers are holding a rally outside Douglas County School District headquarters. These teachers walked off the job today and the district canceling classes ahead of that knowing that they didn't have enough substitutes to fill the void. These teachers protesting the new school board's actions. Among those actions, an alleged behind the scenes conspiracy to oust Superintendent Corey Wise. I understand that there are going to be politics involved in a lot of things, but it needs to be uh, a conversation and they had a perfect opportunity to have that conversation on Tuesday. This rally is also in part about the new board's decision to amend previous equity policies in the district. It was a set of guidelines that helped frame the district's approach to equity to create a more suitable environment for different students and to enhance inclusion within the district. Teachers, parents, and students demanding more ethical leadership and transparency. In Castle Rock, Russell Haythorn, Denver 7. Russell, thank you. Turning to weather, the sun helped to melt a little bit of that snow, and it's not as cold as it was yesterday, but we're not quite over it. Stacy Donaldson is here. Stacy, we heard some parts of the state almost hit below 50 last night. That's right. It was tremendous, the overnight lows we had all across the state last night. Here in Denver, we hit 11 below for that overnight low. So we've had a long way to come to warm up to 22 degrees in Denver, teens out toward DIA and into Commerce City and Thornton. We have mid to upper 20s toward Chatfield, Highlands Ranch, and into Littleton with teens and 20s off to the west. Now you factor in the wind chill, it feels like it's 5 degrees at DIA, feels like 13 in Aurora, and below zero temperatures for northeastern Colorado. So as we go through the rest of this evening, it's going to get colder. Obviously, wind chill uh, advisory has been issued for the eastern plains and Colorado Springs for the wind chill factor around 20 below zero. So it's going to be very cold again tonight, two below for our overnight low here in Denver. And you can see all those below zero temperatures across the state. And if you're not below zero, then you're in the single digits. That's for sure here along the I-25 corridor all the way across the eastern plains. So for tonight, it'll be another cold one for us. And as we go into the next 24 hours, we're going to be talking about dry weather. But so far this season, we've had 20.9 inches of snow and we should have 34.7 by the end of February. But we're looking at a dry weekend. I'll have that complete seven day forecast coming up in a few minutes. A big development today in the war on terror. U.S. Special Forces carried out a raid on Syrian's Islamic State leader. After a two-hour gun battle, the ISIS leader set off a bomb that killed himself and his family. Thirteen in all were killed. President Biden says all Americans have returned safely from the operation. You can see him here in this photo with Vice President Harris and other U.S. security leaders. They're watching the operation as it unfolded from the White House. Last night's operation took a major terrorist leader off the battlefield, and it sent a strong message to terrorists around the world. We will come after you and find you. Now, this is seen as a significant blow for ISIS, as the group had been trying to reassert itself in Syria and Iraq. A standoff in Aurora lasted nearly 10 hours before coming to an end today. Police were called out to check on a man with a gun at the Extended Stay Hotel near I-225 and Iliff. A woman came out of the room unharmed, and eventually 27-year-old Marco Hernandez was taken into custody. He's facing domestic violence and second-degree assault charges.
The list of mass mandates ending keeps growing. Jefferson County announced today their mandate will end on February 18th. Taking a closer look at other areas, Denver and Broomfield will no longer have a mask mandate starting tomorrow. Mask orders in Adams and Arapahoe counties will expire Saturday. Larimer County's mask order will end next Saturday. But remember, businesses and schools may have their own mask requirements outside of county orders. While getting rid of mask mandates is great news for a lot of people, we know some are not going to be comfortable with the change. It's okay to lean in and say, I need a little more time. I want to be gentle with myself, just like any habit that we want to change. Um, for some people going cold turkey, that's the way to do it. For some people, it doesn't work. And so beating ourselves up for having a hard time does not help. Dr. Gava says it's important to respect people who want to keep wearing their masks and respect people who don't. Medicare will now start covering at home COVID tests. For everyone else, health insurance companies are now covering up to eight of those tests per month. Medicare was initially not included, but that's changing starting in early spring. Now those tests can only be purchased through an eligible pharmacy. This comes as COVID testing continues to be a challenge across the country. A team of uh, scientists at the University of California, Santa Barbara, have developed what they're calling a potential game changer for testing. An app and lab kit can turn your smartphone into a COVID-19 detection system. In a study published in the journal JAMA Network Open, scientists say these kits can give you quick results at a fraction of the cost of a current test. Basically spit into a cup, you pour it into a you know, reaction mix, our magic mix. You put it, in a, you put it into a, 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 on a hot plate. You put the phone on top of a box, you turn it on and you go, you leave. Okay, 25 minutes later, this thing will show up on your phone. And if it's, you have a, a green dot, you're good. A, a red dot with a little explanation point, uh, you're not good. That's Michael Mahan. He worked on the test system called Smart Lamp. He says it's just as accurate as a PCR test, but faster and less expensive. Now you can get results in 25 minutes and the lab kits can be put together for less than a one-time cost of $100. The screening test can be run for less than $7. Compare that to about $150 for a PCR test that's not covered by insurance or $10 to $25 for an at-home antigen test. Now, Smart Lamp's testing system also solves another problem with current at-home testing. They're very fast and very cheap, okay? So the opposite of PCR, they're, well, they're, they're, uh, but they're not very, sens they're not very um, sensitive or accurate. OK, and this has led to a lot of problems in the, United, in the United States and worldwide. He says they've already been getting interest from people who want to make their kits and tests available for the public to use at home. The app is free and is currently available for Android phones. It also works to detect the flu. Now, they don't have uh, FDA clearance for this test just yet, but they designed it with the emergency use guidelines in mind and plan to submit it to the FDA. As the president announces new action to combat gun violence, another group is uncovering a weakness in current laws. The new database that shows which dealers could be responsible for illegal sales and gun trafficking. And coming up, crime hotspots in Denver. The city's mayor talks about his plans to reduce crime in certain areas.